Hi, this is Lori, and this is my homework for Paul McCorder's Pico W course, Lessons 10 and 11. In these two lessons, we're learning how to control an LED with a potentiometer as the input device to determine how bright to make the LED shine. So as we turn the potentiometer from left to right, we increase the brightness. We turn it the other way, the brightness goes all the way down to off. Um, as a part of this, Paul um, explains to us that uh, we don't perceive brightness on a linear scale, so we, we can change the scale of the potentiometer, the input coming in, to make it so that as we turn the potentiometer, it appears to be sort of a linear change to us in our eyes um, in the brightness. And I found this all very fascinating and uh, the different uh, equations that people use to try to uh, create this sort of linear perceived brightness scale. So I, at the end of this video, I'll talk a little bit about my thoughts on that. So we've, I've thought about this before, and I made this particular slide for the Raspberry Pi course that Paul does. Um, and I, I just, for me, it was nice to put everything on a graph. I, I like a picture to think about uh, conceptually about this idea. So, you know, if we perceive LED brightness in a nonlinear way, that's kind of this uh, blue curve. And here we have sort of a scale for brightness, 0 to 100. And then usually we talk about uh, duty cycles for pulse width modulation, and it can go from 0 to 100%. Now, for our Pico, and the function we use, this duty U16, we actually give it a number between 0 and 65, 535 to set this duty cycle. So that's a little bit different, but you can kind of think about it the same. So 0 is a 0% 0 duty cycle, and obviously if we put in 65, 535, that's 100%. So 50% on our Pico scale is 32, 768, for example. And so um, I just made this graph to kind of get it straight in my mind that when we're at these early uh, duty cycles, um, a very small change yields a pretty large change to our own eyes. And then as we get further up in the duty cycles, um, you know, uh, at the high end, even a large change in duty cycle is pretty hard to perceive. So that's that's what we're up against. And you can see that's kind of going to give us a nonlinear uh, curve for our perceived brightness. So we're going to have to do something kind of nonlinear with this uh, with this scale so that we can linearize it for our eyes. And Paul asked us to simply figure out a way to use our potentiometer to control the brightness of the LED rather than getting the input from the user as we did in the previous lesson number nine. So I have a little bit more on this uh, project right now. I have a couple extra LEDs that I'm going to use a little bit later in my homework to demonstrate some different approaches to the nonlinear equation. But for right now, all we're going to try to do is take this potentiometer rating um, from our analog to digital converter and drive this LED right here and uh, adjust its brightness as I twist the knob. I'm not going to try to worry about this whole nonlinear business. Here's the code. It's uh, fairly simple. We're going to import our needed modules set up our potentiometer on uh, pin number 26, GPIO 26, have our LED set up, and um, then we're going to read the potentiometer using the read U16 function. And then I just want to make sure that uh, it's reliably off even with some bounce. So I found that if I, if I cut off once the potentiometer reads 700 or well less than 700, I just want it to be off. And I also, on the other end, I just say, once it gets up to 65, 500, go ahead and just turn it fully on. So and there's a lot of room in this scale. So that was just a way to make it fully go off and fully go on and not be quite so sensitive to the noise in the potentiometer. Then we're uh, just going to put that pot value right into our duty function, make it an integer because it has to be an integer. And uh, which it should be actually, um, and then I'll print that to the screen. We'll sleep just a two tenths of a second, and we'll use our try and accept so we can leave gracefully. So let's just run this one. Let's see what happens. All right, so you can see I have it off. Oh, I'm going to put my little um, shield on so maybe we can see a little bit better. And I'm going to use my little screwdriver to turn the potentiometer. So I'm going to turn it up slowly and. Let's see, hopefully we're seeing it come on. And 
slowly take it all the way up. And it should be getting pretty bright by now. And it is really hard to see much difference when you're up at the higher end. But now we're up to the top and I'll just slowly take it back down. That's about halfway. And you can see, yeah, if you look on the screen, you can see that it's about halfway in between 60, 0 and 65,000. Um, it's still pretty bright. And then we'll take it on back down. And uh, turn it off. So I'm a little late to the homework, and I saw that quite a few people noticed that uh, the way Paul thought through the right kind of equation to create a nonlinear change um, to linearize the brightness part, um, some of his thinking didn't matter in terms of having to think of the number of steps, 16 steps or 50 steps. Several, several students figured that out and in fact found that you know this equation was really what Paul was using and as long as the exponent in it was um, was uh, floating that it didn't matter how many steps you thought through and so that's what I have here I'm just using some Excel to to do some some thinking about this equation because I, I love the way that Paul thought through how to come up with this equation and I think that you know the steps part of it is is kind of the mental model that he used to to come up with it so I really appreciate that even though you know the way we were doing it it didn't matter how many steps um, so I just created some potentiometer values potential potentiometer values running between 0 and 65 535 that's the max so I just put a few of the um, basic ones in and then I also carefully picked um, ones that represented 5% of that range, 10% of that range, 50%, so that's halfway, and then 75%, and of course, um, 100%, which would be 65, 535. So um, that's, this is an important uh, input here to all the rest of this spreadsheet. So hopefully you can stick with me, um, and that's just showing you the percent of the range that each of these numbers represents. And then this is Paul's first equation using um, the simplified version, I'll call it. And that would be the number that we're going to put into um, the pulse width modulation duty uh, method here, duty U16. This would be the number we put in if this is the potentiometer value. So if we're halfway, as you can see here with Paul's equation, um, we're only going to put in a 256. Um, so that's how we're kind of changing it so that we have sort of this nonlinear change. We're having very small changes early on, and then we're only going to have these large changes at the very end. Um, so that's, that's a way to create that nonlinear change for the duty cycle, but um, have it perceived more linearly by our eyes. So I, I thought that was fascinating. And then in one of the other uh, lessons, lesson five, I uh, do a lot of talking about the fact that if you read about the Pico's analog to digital converter that we're using with our potentiometer, we really are only getting 12-bit precision, not this 16-bit precision. So when we use the read function, it takes uh, a number coming out of our ADC that goes from 0 to 4095 and scales it up to a number that goes from 0 to 65, 535. So we really only have um, 496 unique values um, for the potentiometer. We don't have 65,000 unique values. Um, so I started thinking, well, wow, wouldn't it be cool if instead of, um, you know, having this scale for our potentiometer, our potentiometer only went from 0 to 495. So I'm thinking about this equation and thinking, couldn't I put 495 here and 495 here? And would that give me the same sort of... Um, ramping, you know, same sort of equation, and it actually changes somewhat when you change the scale. And you actually ramp a little less um, steeply, which I kind of like. So um, to make this work, I first imagined that uh, actually the potentiometer value is going to go from 0 to 495. Then I'm going to calculate my equation here. And this is the number when I scale it back to the values from 0 to 65, 535. This is the number I would put in 
to um, this duty cycle U16 because it still expects the 16-bit even though I'm kind of playing around with thinking about 12-bit here. And if I put this number into to the LED, you can see when we compare, for example, at the 50% point using the equation that Paul had in the lesson, we would give a 256, but using my 12-bit thinking, I would, I would send um, 1,023 instead. And uh, so I kind of like that because it, it doesn't ramp quite so much here at the end, and I think this might be a little too much, but anyways, um, so hopefully that made some sense. Um, and then I thought, well, you know, why get stuck with, you know, I could pick any range. So this, this equation could be adapted for almost any range where I think um, your number of levels is greater than one or two um, should work. And so I said, well, what if we did a zero to 100? Um, then again, I just kind of, you know, create a, a scale from zero to 100 then do that same equation where I separate everything, you know, just, just substituting 100 in where the 65, 535 was, and calculate that, and then I scale it back to the, to the scale that we're going to need for that um, U16 function, and so you can see you get a, a little bit different of a scale, and in fact, it doesn't ramp quite as, um, quite as quickly as it did for the 4095, or the original equation. So, you know, that's why I picked these 50%. We would have put a 256, a 1023, but here we would do a 6554. So I have some code to kind of look at this as it goes by. So let's take a look at that. Here's some code I put together to compare the three different uh, equations I just showed in the spreadsheet. So the original one, using the full 65, 535 range, the 4095 range, and the 0 to 100 range. So you can see which one's set up to show which. And uh, we're just going to set those pins up. And then I'm going to go through a list of uh, pot values. So we're not going to actually read the potentiometer. I'm just going to input 0% uh, of the way through, 5% of the way through, 10, 50, 75, and 100 percent. So we can just kind of compare those particular uh, values. And this is just all the equations to put that together. So um, here we are going to go through the lists and we'll put in the pot value for the uh, 65, 535. We don't need to make any changes to that one. But when we get to the 4095, we'll have to do the scaling to get it onto that scale and then um, do the equation and we'll uh, scale it back down here you can see we do the hundred and scale it back into the zero to 65 scale um, and then I just calculate the percent here to print everything out using the uh, formatting that I've learned from all the students uh, Charlotte and Keith have shown uh, does make a nicer uh, use of those uh, that type of formatting and uh, then we'll go ahead and light the LEDs um, at the same percentage value um, and see what they look like. All right, so we'll just say up front that um, the 100 scale kind of already starts on. And you'll see I actually ended up picking that one to do um, as a by itself and using the potentiometer. So you'll see we can take care of that, that even though it starts out initially sort of on, we can adjust for that. I'm going to sleep for four seconds and allow us to look at each of those settings for a second or two and then we can turn everything off whenever we're ready it'll just keep looping so let's run it so i made uh, some changes to the layout of the screen so that we could see the uh, printout a little bit better from the previous layout let's go ahead and run it there we go so now we should be able to see all the printout and the um, LEDs here showing off the three different equations and we're up to 50% and that's when you can really see a difference and 75 and then 100% everything's on and it comes back around we'll let it run one more time all the way through so you take a good look so I think what's kind of interesting is that uh, with this equation that Paul came up with, we're able to adjust it to maybe what we want to have happen. So uh, 
it's kind of nice that you can do a few things to to make it uh, uh, go the way you want, ramp up uh, the way you want it to ramp up. All right, I'm going to stop the program there. All right, and then uh, what I did after that was um, I just picked the 0 to 100 scale and uh, wrote a program to use that one. And here's where I, you know, as I did in the first one, I did a little bit of cleanup and just uh, turned it off if it was less than 700 or if it's greater than 65,500, we're going to turn it on. And then otherwise we're going to use the uh, equation for 0 to 100 and then scale it back to the 16-bit number that we need for our duty function here and uh, let it go. So um, let's go ahead and run this one. And we'll put the, in a, don't need this uh, part right here, so let's take that off. So that's not relevant. And we'll go ahead and let it go. There we go. Check and see if it's coming on. Yeah. I think it makes it pretty smooth. And really almost any of them uh, just get some sort of nonlinear scale that that works and uh, I know a couple other students uh, use some different functions and uh, I know Charlotte did a nice one for the Pico Zero library so uh, yeah you just uh, play around and different functions will work slightly differently and you know this one you can adapt uh, to work the way you want so that was what I put together for my homework thanks for the great lesson Paul